The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of Daniel in the Lion's Den. Hey, you over there. Where do you think you're going? Huh? Me? You talking to me, mister? No, I'm talking to you. What are you doing hanging around the animal grottos? Just looking. Boy, these cats are Mr. Beatty's. There are beauties. Yeah, you ain't supposed to be on the grounds. This ain't a visiting day. We're closed to the public. Oh, I'm not the public. No? Then what are you? I'm an animal trainer. <laughs> animal trainer, huh? What's your name? Donato. Alberto Donato. But they call me Dan. I know everybody in the business. Never heard of you. Oh, you will, someday. Yeah, I can hardly wait. Now, suppose you just get off the grounds. Suppose I don't. I'll throw you off. Oh, now, take it easy, old man. Old man? Why, you young punk, I... I... Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I shouldn't have said that. Get out of here! Beat it! Please, I didn't mean to be a smart aleck. I don't care what you meant. If you aren't going in one minute, I... What's the trouble, Mike? Uh, Something wrong? Oh, oh. It's you, Mr. Beatty. Why, Beatty? I caught this young fellow fooling around the grottos. I told him the grounds are closed today. Gee, I I didn't mean to cause any trouble, Mr. Beatty. I just thought I might get a chance to talk to you. He was being mighty fresh. I... Okay, Max, okay. I'll handle this. Smart young punk. Pay a man to watch things around here. Try to do my duty. Everybody push it. Well, young fella, looks like you and old Max didn't get along too well. Golly, Mr. Beatty, I... I didn't mean to cause any trouble for the old boy. I'm awful sorry. Max is a bit short-tempered. I guess when the weather's wrong, his old bones start to ache. Well, what can I do for you? I'm an animal trainer, Mr. Beatty. You're kind of young, aren't you? Well, not exactly a full-fledged trainer yet, but I want to be. Why? Why? Oh, gosh, why wouldn't I? (laughs) I could give you plenty of reasons. You must be joking. You're the greatest trainer in the world. You must like it. Oh, I like it all right, but... Sometimes I wonder why. Well, must be something that gets under our skin, eh, Mr. Beatty? (laughs) Must be. Not that I'm in your class or anything like that, but, well, you know what I mean. I think so. Now, tell me, why have you come to me? Well, I want a job, Mr. Beatty. Any kind of job, just so I can be near the cats. I'm afraid I don't need anybody right now. Oh, please. I'll do anything, sir. Anything. When the circus is in winter quarters, we keep the staff down to absolute minimum. Mr. Beatty, I'll work hard. I want to watch you learn all I can. Well, I... My last boss, he let me work his cats. They were old and tired. Didn't learn very much. You say you've worked the cats? Yes, sir. But not like yours. Oh, please give me a chance, Mr. Beatty. Someday I'll be a real trainer. You'll see. Yes, or you might turn out to be like old Max. The old man? What's he got to do with this? You're too young to remember, but once there was a trainer called the Great Maximilian. Believe me, he was great. You mean that crippled old man was a famous animal trainer? One of the best. What happened? The thing that happens to guys foolish enough to fool around the big cats. One performance, he made a mistake. Just a little mistake. Two years later, they finished patching him up and let him out of the hospital. Gee, I didn't realize. I wish I hadn't been so fresh. I learned plenty from that old man. That's why I feel I should help him when he's out of luck. Mr. Beatty... Do you think the great Max Million might coach me? Or maybe even you would. Mm-hmm. Still want to be a trainer, huh? Yes, sir. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. You mean you'll give me a job? I shouldn't. You'd be better off if I just threw you off the grounds, but it must be something that gets under our skin, huh? <laughs> You're pulling my leg. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but just see you don't let one of my cats do it. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Beatty. And gee, sir, I- I'm really grateful to you. Don't mention it. And- Say, what's your name, son? Donato. Look, they call me Dan. Dan, huh? Yeah. Dan. That's a fine name for a guy who wants to climb into the lion's den. (laughs) 
And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure entitled Daniel in the Lion's Den. The only one I could remember more difficult to discourage from a career in the animal arena than young Donato was a certain eager character from Chillicothe named Clyde Beatty. I couldn't be too tough on the kid because I remembered being just as eager and just as cocksure. I was planning to leave winter quarters for a week or so on business, so I decided to give young Dan a few lessons on fundamentals. Dan, there's one thing I never want you to forget. Now, Mrs. Beatty will verify this. Any one of those big cats is capable of tearing you to shreds, and they'd like nothing better than a chance to do it. Is that right, dear? Absolutely, Clyde. You see, Dan, some people get the mistaken notion that wild beasts can be made into pets. But some people do make them into pets, don't they? That's not very wise. That's when they're most dangerous. No matter how well you think you know a wild animal, you can never know when it's going to turn on you. Gee, my former boss kind of made pets of his cats. You, you say this boss of yours taught you fundamentals? A few. Well, here, let me see you handle the tools of the trade. There's a whip, a gun, and a chair. Well, you hold both the chair and the gun like this in the left hand, hmm? and the whip in your right hand. Now, sometimes if you want a free hand to use a stick or move something, you sling the whip over your shoulders, around the back of your neck like this. Good. Now, move over there and let's see how you'd work. How do you like the boy, honey? He's very nice. The class. That boy handles himself awfully well. Well, He seems to be a natural. He must have been telling the truth about having handled it. You're faint with a chair. Show me how you'd handle a charging cat. Okay, Mr. Betty. Oh, his footwork seems pretty rough. He could stand some practice on that. That'd help him a lot. Yeah. Dan, now the cat's charging. Blank him, blank him. Not bad. You know, I think I'll try him in the arena with one of the cats. Do you think that's a good idea, Clyde? I want to see how he reacts. I'll be standing by. That'll do, son. Come on back here. Oh, was, I, was I all right, Mr. Beatty? Fair, fair. At least you know how to use your equipment. Your footwork's plenty rusty, though. Oh. Would you like to get in the training arena with one of the cats, Dan? No. Why not? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Take it easy, not so fast. Oh, Eddie! Eddie! Yes, Mr. Beatty? Let Bobby in the arena. We want to work him a bit. Yes, sir. Eddie, the cage boy, is going to let one of the smaller cats into the arena. He's a rough one, and he's tough. Oh, I'll watch you, Mr. Beatty. Don't let him think you're afraid, or he'll charge you. He's a sly critter, watches every move you make. Uh-huh. I see. Yeah? Here he is. I thought you said he was small. <laughs> well, if you think he's big, wait till you see Nero. Cat's ready, Mr. Beatty. Okay, Eddie. Now, don't worry, Dan. I'll be right here in the safety cage if anything happens. Just be sure to keep on your feet, okay? Okay. All right, let's get into the safety cage. Well, Mr. Beatty, here I go. Now, wait a minute. Huh? What's the matter? Now, don't tell me you were going to go dashing in the arena just like that. Is something wrong? Close your eyes. Close my eyes? Okay, they're closed. Now, tell me everything that's in that arena. Well, there's a lion, of course, and... And... Open your eyes, Dan. Now, take a look. What do you see besides a half thousand pounds of cat on the hoof? Well, the pedestal over on the left. Yeah? And a wooden hurdle leaning way over against the bars on the right. Uh Uh-huh. And, well, I guess that's all. Right. If you'd have gone in there, you might have stumbled over one of them. You'd have been in trouble. Yeah, I see what you mean. Never go into an arena without memorizing the position of every piece of equipment. Yes, sir. I understand. Good. All right. Go on in and give Bobby some exercise. Well, don't just stand there. Go to work on him, Dan. Clyde, Arthur. Clyde, I don't like the way the boy's handling himself. Oh, he'll be all right, Harriet. His movement's too jerky. Bobby knows he's not too sure of himself. I know. I'm watching closely. I don't want to alarm the youngster. I'll try to correct him without getting him confused. You're doing fine, Dan, but you're too stiff. Don't jerk. Move easily. Watch it. Bobby smashed the chair out of his hands. Dan's lost the gun. Don't bend over for that gun. Crack your whip, Dan. Crack your whip. Bobby's stalking him. I'd better get in there. Out of the way, Dan. Back, Bobby. Back. Back. All right, Dan, hit the safety cage. Get back, you devil. Eddie, open the chute. I'm sending Bobby out. Right, Mr. Go on. Betty. Go on. Get over there. Get in that chute. Are you all right, Dan? 
Yes, I didn't do so well. Oh, Mr. Bailey. You were fun. Just a bit stiff, as I You made a couple of mistakes out there, didn't you? <laughs> yes, sir. I guess I got quite a few things to learn. <laughs> That's right. But I'll teach you all you have to know. You're... You mean you're not going to wash me out? Oh, no. When you learn how to use those big, flat feet of yours, I'll make an animal trainer out of you, and a good one, too. Hey, you, boy, ain't you got them cages swept out yet? Oh, just about, Mr. Maximilian. There, that'll do it. Yeah. What about the rest of your chores? Well, it... Cleaned all the cages, cut the fresh meat, filled the water pans. Guess I'm about through. Oh, no, you ain't. There's still plenty I can find for you to do. <laughs> Don't strain yourself. I'm tired. When you came here, you asked for work. I'm going to see you get it. Oh, golly. You still sore at me, Mr. Maximilian. Uh, I... oh, I'm sorry I acted like the way I did the first day. I, I wish we could be friends. Uh, ain't got time for that kind of stuff. Too much to do around here. Mr. Beatty said he learned plenty from you. That's right. He was my cage boy once. I sure wish Mr. Beatty would get back. I want another crack at those cats. Beatty will be back soon enough. Too soon to please me. I've practiced every day since he's been gone. Been practicing on my footwork. Footwork? Bah! Well, don't you think it's important? Look, I was the best in the business. Did I ever practice footwork? Sissy stuff, I call it. Oh, it helps your coordination. Coordination bunk. All you've got to learn is how to smash them cats around, make them know who's boss. Oh, sure, but there's lots... You've got to bluff them. Bluff them to a standstill. Well, Mr. Beatty says the best weapon a trainer has is bluff, It's the still... only weapon. Them cats wasn't so dumb, they'd know a man ain't got a chance against but them. But Mr. Beatty says... Mr. Beatty says, Mr. Beatty says... Look, you... I've forgotten more than Beatty will ever know. Well, I... Just... When you're out in that arena with a bunch of milling cats, you ain't got time to think about all that fancy stuff. You've got to whip and beat them critters into doing what you want. If one of them gets out of line, bam, give him the works. That's not the way Mr. Beatty does it. He's well, he just always... a smart guy, too. A wiseacre like yourself. Just because he tells you you've got a chance in this business, you think he's a great guy. He is a great guy. Oh, yeah? Then why... And he had you out there with a ring full of cats. Oh, he doesn't think I'm ready yet. Or maybe he thinks you're so ready, you'll soon be better than him. Oh, now that isn't true. Look, at youngster, all. you're as ready as you'll ever be. You mean, you think I could handle an arena full of cats? If you do what I tell you, you can. Well, now, I. Well, what's the matter? Betty taking all the spunk out of you? Oh, no, no, Mr. Maximilian. But he gave me strict orders not to work any of the animals till he got back. Orders? Hoey. There's only one way to find out if you've got what it takes. Get out there and work with a dozen of the critters. Gee, I, What's the I matter? You yellow? No. But, well, Mr. Beatty okay, said... Okay, okay, do what Mr. Beatty says. But I'm telling you, you'll never get to be a trainer if you do. You aren't jealous of Mr. Beatty, are you? Jealous? Me? Jealous of him? I could still teach him plenty. You too, if I thought you had the guts. What do you want me to do? Now, I'll tell you. There's only one way. Either you got what it takes, or you ain't. I'll turn a dozen cats in that arena. My, that was a hot, tiresome trip, Clyde. It's going to feel good to get back to Fort Lauderdale again. Business is business, honey. And I'll admit I'm glad we're back, too. <laughs> well, there's the place. Oh, doesn't it look beautiful? Terrific. The men have done a swell job of landscaping the grottos and the animal enclosures. The visitors certainly get a kick out of seeing the animals outside their cages, don't they? Yeah. Oh, look at all the cars in the parking lot. We must have an extra large crowd today. Hey, we've had record crowds all season, but I've never seen this many in the middle of the week. Maybe they think you're going to work out the cat. No, I posted notices saying the exhibitions were to be canceled for a while. Well, anyway, there's a mob here today. Look, they're all gathered there around the exhibition arena. Yeah, that's funny. Why would there be anyone around the arena unless... unless... Clyde, someone is working the animals for this crowd. Well, that's impossible. I left orders for exhibitions to be canceled until we got back. Well, somebody's putting on a show. Come on. Oh, yes. Let's go. Eddie! Eddie! Eddie, 
What's going on here? Mr. Beatty, we, we didn't expect you till tomorrow. I said, what's going on here? Well, it's like this. Oh, oh Maxie, well, well... Don't tell me that's young Dan in there with all those cats. I, I'm afraid it is, Mr. Beatty. I tried to stop that him. That crazy young fool, he's not ready for that. Oh, Clyde, he'll be killed. <laughs> And now, back to Clyde Beatty and his exciting story called Daniel in the Lion's Den. The exhibition arena at our Fort Lauderdale winter quarters was jam-packed with visitors. In complete disregard of my strict orders, my apprentice trainer, Dan, was putting a group of mixed lions and tigers through their paces. All right, what's the meaning of this, Eddie? I, I tried to stop him, Mr. Beatty. Them? Oh, Max and that young fellow. You mean Max put that boy up to this? Yeah. He told the kid the practice you were putting him through was a lot of bunk. Well, what could his purpose be, sending a green kid in there? You better get in that arena, Mr. Beatty. That youngster can't handle all them cats. Well, hand me a whip and a gun. Here you are. Well, if that boy makes one mistake, I... Should I open the chute and let them cats out? No. No, Wait. Say, that kid's doing all right. I don't know. Them cats is plenty feisty. Haven't been worked for a long time. Well, the boy's doing a good job. Oh, my gosh. He's finally got them cats towing the line. Eddie, that boy's got a future in this business. Dan. Yes, sir? I've got a big investment in this outfit. I... I know, sir. What you did this afternoon could have wound up in a terrible tragedy. I shouldn't have listened to Mr. Maximilian. If you'd been hurt or killed, I'd have felt responsible. I, I'll do anything to prove how sorry I am, sir. Your only excuse is that you felt you were taking advice from an older and more experienced man. Well, don't blame Mr. Maximilian, sir. I should have known better. Old Max is bitter. He resents me, and he's probably jealous of you. You... You don't think he wanted me to be killed? No. But he did want to show you up, and in doing so, show me up, too. I see. Well, it's all over. You mean I'm through? I mean you're going to be a great trainer, but you'll have to prove to me that I can trust you. Oh, yes, sir. Until further orders from me, you're not to go near any of the animals. Is that clear? Oh, I'd rather be sent to bed without my supper for a year, Mr. Beatty. But it's clear. <laughs> you, Clyde? Yes, honey. What did you do about young Dan? Oh, gave him a lecture. You didn't fire him, did you? No, no, no. Oh. Well, what about Max? I had a talk with him. He said the boy begged to be allowed in the arena. Do you think that's true? No. Well, what did you say? I was in a spot, honey. But Max deliberately endangered that youngster. It appears so. He wanted to hurt me through the boy. He resents us both. You should let Max go. He might cause trouble again. But I just can't fire him, honey. Sometimes being sentimental can be dangerous. I'll keep an eye on him. Oh, Clyde Beatty. You're a hopeless idealist. A sentimentalist and... and... A jerk. Yes. But I love you. <laughs> Mr. Maximilian, what are you doing up there? What's it to you? Gosh, I don't think you should be up there on that railing. If I waited for a squirt like you to patch this broken guardrail, some of them visitors would be falling into this lion grotto. Yeah, but the way you're balanced up there, you're liable to fall in. You trying to tell me what to do? Oh, no, but, but please let me do that job for you. I want it fixed right. You go about your business. Well, I just thought I could help you. Hey, Dan, could you come over here a minute? Huh? Okay, Eddie, I'll be right there. Sure I can't help you, Mr. Maximilian? Go on, beat it. Okay, but if you need help, just sing out. Yes, Eddie? How about giving me a hand? Oh. Here, Dan. What's the deal? I gotta move these here cases over to that shed. Okay. Hold her steady. I'll take this in. <laughs> what was that? Max! It was Max! He must have fallen! Here, here, through here. I knew he shouldn't be up on that fence. What? Where is he? Max! Max! He's fallen into the grotto. Them cats, they're all gathering around. They'll tear him to shreds in a minute. Dan, what are you doing? Here. 
Give me a hand. If we can rip off a hunk of this guardrail, I'll have something to work with. Work with? I'm going down there to help the old man. There. This will make a good club. You can't go down there alone. Hey, wait. That's an 18-foot drop. Dan! Dan, look out! They got a gang up on you! The old man's passed off. I'm trying to get to him. It's no use, Dan! The cats are closing in on him! I'll beat him! Oh, get out! Get out when you got a chance! Quick! Quick! Go get some help! That crazy kid! <laughs> Hurry, Mr. Beatty. Hurry. Well, what happened, Eddie? Max fell into the grotto. The cats ganged up on him. Then Dan jumped in. You mean to tell me Dan's down there? Yeah, with just a piece of rail for a club. He was fighting like a, a demon when I left. Uh, oh, look, the cats are milling around the base of that mound of rocks on the other side of the grotto. Dan, Dan, are you there? Here, here I am. He's standing over the old man. One of the cats must have tried to drag Max into that small cave. Yeah, the boy must have beat him off. Dan, how are you doing? I... I think I can hold him off a while yet. As long as his back's against those rocks, he's got a chance. If the cats don't decide to climb that mound and get above him. There goes the tiger now. It's crawling up the rocks. Dan, hold out, boy. I'll be down there in a minute. Don't come down. It's no use, Mr. Baby. There are two... Too many of them. Hold on. Keep wailing away at them. What are you going to do, Mr. Baby? Uh, take too long to fight through that gang of cats from here. Come on. Well, I've got to drop down on that mound from the other side. And then jump to the floor of the grotto where Dan is. I hope you make it before that tiger. Eddie, toss me that length of two-by-four over there. Here you are. Now what? It's a 15-foot drop to that ledge. Yeah, I don't want to break a leg when I drop. Here, you hold on to this end of the board. What are you going to do? Skin down and then drop. Right. Oh, oh, it's too late. The tiger's made it to the top. He's directly above Dan. Just hang out of that board. Don't go down there. He ain't got nothing to fight with. When I'm down, drop the board. I'll use that. How are you doing down there, Dan? Okay. Okay. Thanks for getting that tiger off my neck. Try to clear a space for me. I'll drop down and take over for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, back. Back, you devils! Uh, back! Eddie, get the rope. Toss it in down here. Right, boss. Need guns or anything? No, Dan and I will hold him till we can haul old Max out. Hurry, Mr. Beatty. Hurry! Make some room in your lion's den, Daniel. I'm coming down. <laughs> gentlemen, I can't tell you what it means to me to have been selected to present this distinctive merit award to an heroic and deserving young hero. Step up here, Dan. Here, sir. Come on, come on, up front here. Yes, sir. It is a great thrill for me to present to you Alberto Donato, this award from the citizens of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh, oh thanks. Thanks, Mr. Beatty. Thanks, all of you. Here, here. Take it, you dope. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I just want to get off this stage. I'm scared. Stuff. Well, come on, then. Oh, I'm proud of you, Dan. Really proud. <laughs> thanks. Golly, thanks for everything, Mr. Beatty. Uh, Mr. Beatty, Dan. Hello, Max. I, I want you to accept the thanks of a foolish old man. Oh, I'm glad you could come to this shindig. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. Dan... I just wanted to say thanks to you for saving my life. Well, I'm, I'm sure glad you're all right again, Mr. Maximilian. And I wanted to tell you, you're going to be a great animal man someday. Maybe even as good as the greatest of us all, Clyde Beatty. <laughs> Clyde Beatty will be back with a word about our next exciting story. But now... 
Here's Clyde Beatty with a preview of our next adventure. It isn't often that I go hunting for an animal with the idea of killing it. But a couple of years ago, I went to Alaska intent upon putting an end to a giant bear that was creating havoc in the Matanuska Valley, slaughtering livestock and people. You'll hear the exciting hunt for the Kodiak Killer when next we meet. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Daniel in the Lion's Den was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tussie. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>